Hey friends, I'm Mel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm glad that you're here and tonight I'm bringing a true labor of love. I have a restoration of a cast iron Dutch oven. It belonged to my husband's mamaw and it had been sitting around in the basement at his parents' house for I don't know how long. But his daddy pulled it out and wanted me to have it. I'd been looking for a Dutch oven to make some bread in. And uh, he said, I've got one, it needs to be restored. And uh, he has always enjoyed cooking out on the fire with cast iron and that kind of stuff. So I was just really tickled that he wanted to share an old piece with me. I'd never done this before, but with the help of my daughter Callie's boyfriend, Ryan, he was here one weekend and said, you know, we can do that. I said, cool, let's do it. You're going to be stunned at the transformation of this and just how easy it was. It is much easier than you think to restore a rusted old cast iron piece and re-season it. And then when we're done, I'm going to show you some Dutch oven bread that even I made on my third try. And I'll show you the do's and I will definitely show you the don'ts that I ran into along the way. So grab you some sweet tea, kick on back. Let me do the cast iron cleaning and the bread cooking. Okay, friends, I just want to start out by giving you a little glimpse of what this looked like before. Very rusted very just coated in stuff you know I don't know if that's baked on grease if it hadn't been cleaned I'm not sure if this had been used out on the fire or not but it had a lot of buildup a lot of coating and seasoning that needed to be stripped off and just completely redone we're going to start out with just a can of oven cleaner I got this one at the Dollar Tree you're just going to coat very, very heavily, all parts of this cast iron Dutch oven and the lid. You're going to do the inside, outside, everywhere you can get sprayed on it, spray a nice heavy layer. You want to do this in a very well ventilated area. We did this outside. You definitely are going to make a mess and have some fumes off of that oven spray. Once you get this thing coated, we just took a regular old kitchen garbage bag and slide it down in there and you're just going to twist it up and let it sit there for a while. The whole purpose of this is to keep it wet, to keep that oven cleaner on that product. You don't want it, the air to get to it and dry it out. You want it to stay wet and really penetrate into this skillet and stuff. And we let this sit about 20 or 30 minutes. And you can see here how it looks when we unwrap it. And when I say we, I mean Ryan. He really took to scrubbing on this thing. He wanted to work on this. I had mentioned it and he said he'd love to do this. He's done a number of pieces. For his mom and his grandmother and I said more power to you Ryan go for it so he had a steel brush and he had some steel wool there he'll just dip it in a little bucket of water that we've got sitting over there every now and again and he is just scrubbing and loosening up all that baked on seasoning and crud that had accumulated on this thing and he'll just rinse it off over there in that water as he goes and scrub a little more. Now we did this process twice on this Dutch oven here. We could have done it a third time but we just honestly ran out of time and really did not have it in us. But it definitely did need two going overs for us. This is after the first go around and you can already see how much better it's looking. But we definitely gave it another spray and let it set for another little bit and then Ryan did another good scrubbing job on it. Okay. 
as bad as it looked the first time, there wouldn't be much more that could come off. But looky here. That oven cleaner really takes a lot of the work away. I mean, it was still a lot of scrubbing, but it definitely helps. I appreciate Ryan so much doing this for me. And Ryan is so good to help. He likes to do stuff like this. He's a wonderful cook and a wonderful baker. And I just appreciate him and all the things that he does around here to help me when he's here. And here is the satisfying second rinse. You can see how all that dirt and grime is just rinsing right off. And after this, we did not spray it again with oven cleaner, but he did do some more scrubbing. Now, when we were doing this, we did find a crack, and it sort of took the wind out of our sails, and we said, you know, good enough is good enough. It looked like the crack went all the way through, so we don't know if this is going to hold water or anything when you cook in it and it expands. I haven't tried that, but for what I am using this for, it's working perfectly, and I'm A-OK -okay with that. Now, we didn't do a lot of research into how old this is, so look at these markings on the back, and if any of you all are familiar with these, leave us a comment down below and see what you find. We just looked online, and we found a Reddit forum. I don't know how accurate those answers in there are, so I'm not going to share them, but what it did say, it was pretty old. That's all the research I've put into it. It really didn't matter to me. It belonged to family, and that's what I liked about this piece of cast iron. But if you are familiar, definitely leave us the comments below and let us know about age and all that kind of stuff on it. So we have brought them inside, and we have washed them thoroughly, thoroughly in the sink with some water and a little bit of soap at this point that was okay because we were definitely going to be cleaning them some more but we are drying them out in the oven we're setting it to 200 and just letting them sit in there long enough till they dry out and the oven comes to temperature before we get started we do make sure again they're completely dry you know that water is the enemy of all cast iron and we are taking just a light coating of Crisco. Now there are other seasoners out there they sell for cast iron and I've just not used them so I don't want to you know tell you what to use. But we're just giving it a good layer um, going in a little heavy and then we'll wipe some of it off before we put it in the oven but even at this point whenever you're wiping it on you're going to have a lot of discoloration and stuff that comes off on your paper towel don't worry that is normal that's just some of that you know rust and stuff that is going to be baking out of there and uh, just coming off of that cast iron and you're going to season and put a seal over that it's not going to hurt you but it did it did worry me a little bit when I seen it so anyhow We've got our oven cranked up now to 300 degrees. We've got a layer of Crisco on there. We're going to put these in for about 15 minutes. And you want to turn that Dutch oven part upside down. And I did put a pan in the oven under mine in case any of this stuff, you know, dripped off. I didn't want it to get in my oven. And I did move my oven rack down one for this too. Now, when you pull those out, they're going to be hot, so be careful. Now, crank your oven up to 400 degrees, and while you're waiting for it to get up to temperature, you're just going to take another paper towel or cloth and begin to wipe off that Crisco that you've just baked in there. You want any excess oil, you want to try to get that off of it. Then, whenever it gets to 400 degrees, you're going to put them back in there, and you're going to let them cook for about an hour and a half to two hours in the 400 degree oven. Now, this did not smoke up my house. Very little smell at all, but look when it comes out. Those paper towels are going to be white as snow now. You've got a good season on there. Look at that. All that is 
baked on and you've made yourself a nonstick surface to cook on. Now mine was still just a little bit light for my liking, so we just decided to do this process again. And after another coating of Crisco and going through that, look what we came out with. This is slick and beautiful and dark and I am just enjoying using this so much. I love that my father-in-law gave me this piece. It's handed down through our family and you know that crack, I just hate that, but it's working fine for everything that I'm using it for and I'm so thankful to Ryan for um, doing this process for me and letting me film it and share it with you. Now I'm going to show you why I wanted this Dutch oven. I had seen Jen at Cook, Clean, and Repeat make this no-need Dutch oven bread and this is the main reason that I wanted a cast iron Dutch oven. And you're going to use about three and a half cups of flour, and I'm using a good bread flour. And it's a slow rising bread, so you're only going to use a quarter of a teaspoon of this active dry yeast. And then you're going to use about two teaspoons of salt. And I just mix my dry ingredients together and then you're going to add in 14 ounces of water just room temperature cool water it doesn't have to be warm because like I said you're going to cover this and leave it setting out on the counter and it's going to do a slow rise so you're not trying to activate that yeast and get it to working just immediately and this dough is going to come together. It's going to be what bakers call a shaggy dough. It's just not going to be slick. And I do like to spray around my little dough ball in there with a little nonstick spray. It just helps when you go to pull it out to bake it. And I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap. And I'm leaving this one out for about eight hours. And this is a good thing to do before you go to bed at night. And then if the next morning you can dump it out, form it, and bake it. I'm taking a piece of wax paper and I'm just giving it a good dusting of flour here. And let's take a look at our dough after it has set all night. It has risen up perfect. It's not too big, but it's it has risen, but it's not set too long. And you're just going to punch the air down out of that and then flip it out onto your floured surface. And like I said, I just use wax paper because it's a little um, less sticky and it kind of keeps the mess down just a little bit. You want to get some flour around it so that it's nice and easy to work with because this is a no need bread. All you're going to do is just fold this bread over on top of itself you know four or five times to get a nice little shape and then flip it over with the seam on the bottom and that's how it's going to bake up you can see this dough has the perfect texture it's risen, it's nice and easy to work with. It's springing back whenever we fold it over on itself and holding its shape perfectly. So once I've got it formed, I'm just gonna pull me a piece of parchment paper over and set this dough over onto it. And you will bake it, you know, in the parchment paper. I put a little bit of flour underneath just so it wouldn't stick and I'm going to cover this and let it sit there while my oven is preheating. And you're going to preheat this oven to 450 degrees and you want to preheat it with your Dutch oven inside with the lid on. Now when it gets to 450, you're just going to take the parchment paper, dough, everything all in one and set it down into your Dutch oven to bake. 
Most parchment papers are fine to go in the oven at a high temperature. It will get just a little bit crusty. You might want to cut off any extra that's hanging out too far. I'm going to do some cuts in the top. This helps the bread be able to expand when it's baking and it's a decorative look too but it will also help it to be more springy when it does bake up and has that room to expand like that. You're going to bake this with the lid on at 450 degrees for about 30 minutes. I did move my oven rack down because after 30 minutes, you're gonna take the lid off and let it brown up about five or 10 more minutes and you don't want it too close to the top of your oven element. This bread was the best loaf that I have baked so far. It was beautiful, crusty, brown, wonderful texture, easy to work with. I just finally got my kinks worked out on this one. I like to put a little bit of butter on it while it's warm. Just rub it across and it gives it a pretty shine and a wonderful flavor. And then once I get it buttered, I'll just set it out of that cast iron skillet and let it cool. And I am still working on my temperature some because um, I get mine a little bit too done on the bottom for my liking still. So I'm still working, I'm still working that out just a little bit. This one was the perfect texture. It cut perfectly, was crusty on the outside, had just a few holes on the inside, but it was soft, it wasn't doughy, and it just had a great flavor. But now I wanna share with you some tips on things not to do, because this is about the third or fourth loaf that I've made, and I'm just now getting the hang of this. This is supposed to be a very easy bread, but for someone who's not a baker, and that's me, I struggled some. So I just wanna help you out on the front end, maybe save you some headaches. Now this dough, you'll notice it is not risen very much. I let this set out the longest time. It was just not rising. I moved it to a warm place and it was not doing its thing. What happened here was my yeast had went bad. I noticed when I went to make this, it had expired. It was not out of date by a whole lot. But if you ever have any questions, proof your yeast. You can see it didn't rise. It's not holding together. Uh, when I'm trying to get it to shape and put it in there and you can proof your yeast very easily just take about a fourth a cup of warm water and add in a packet of yeast and about a teaspoon of sugar let it set for 10 minutes it should get foamy and it should double in size and if that doesn't happen your yeast is dead just throw it out and don't waste your bread flour until you get some better yeast this bread turns out dense and very much heavy and moist on the inside. Now my second go around, you'll notice this dough is very large. Just because it says you can let this dough set out on the counter eight to 24 hours, it doesn't mean that you should. Um, I was really busy and I saw this dough was ready, but I just let it sit there. Like I said, I am not a baker or a scientist, and I do not understand the ways of dough. But I just let it sit there way, way too long. And this is what happens. Evidently, the yeast eats the sugar. And after all the sugar has been eaten, it starts eating the gluten that's in the bread. And that leaves you a big, gluey, globby mess that you cannot do anything with. It won't shape, it's sticky. I can't tell you the headache I had with this stuff. My kitchen was full of my whole family having a big old time laughing about this mess. I could not get it off this paper. I couldn't get it off my hands. I don't know how much flour I kept pouring into this. It was just a mess. 
Now, it smelled, and that's one of the things you'll notice when your bread has risen too much. It had a very strong smell. This bread actually ended up tasting okay, because, you know, I'm going to fall through here. I ain't going to let it go. It tasted okay, but sometimes that will even carry over into the taste of the bread. Uh, the texture, of course, it'll be like this and won't be good to work with and then the texture of it once it's baked up will sometimes not be good it can affect that cause it to have a lot of holes in it and that kind of stuff um so yeah i finally got it out on a piece of parchment paper i poured some more flour to it and we just are going to bake it up and see what happens I just want to learn how to bake some bread for my family. I feel like such a failure on this one. But you know, it's like anything. How do you learn except by doing? Get your hands in there, literally get your hands in there and they won't come out. <laughs> but you know, you learn by doing and you learn by mistakes. So I thought it was important to show these things and let you see that, um, you know, mistakes happen. I learned a lot on this little loaf of bread right here. I finally got it floured up enough that I could get it pulled off the paper and I'm just gonna form it in my hands and put it on the parchment and put it in the oven and let's see what happens to it. Again, once I get it on the parchment, you can see it's not wanting to hold its shape very well. It's wiggling around. It's, you know, they were laughing. They said, if you watch it, it's trying to escape. And then, of course, they come out in full force in there making fun of me with my bread. But that's all right. You know what? On this one, we check the temperature. I never thought about that before. Bread is done when it's about 195 to 200 degrees. You can see this one did not get as big once it cooked up. It was a little um, textury. I can't quite put my finger on how to explain it. It did have um, some holes through it, more maybe more than it should have, but the flavor was not bad. We tasted it. We saw what we could do with it and the more you got into the middle of it it was it was really good but i say that um, to say this you know don't give up keep working at it if i can do it anybody can i hope that you have enjoyed this restoration just wanted to show you again what this cast iron skillet looked like before and the transformation that has become of it. I am so happy with this and I am just using it all the time, working on this bread, getting better every time. And if anything, I am just tickled to have it because this was passed down through my husband's family. If nothing else, my kids, this cast iron will last for them. And I hope years from now, when I am long gone in heaven, They'll pull this Dutch oven out and remember this day that we spent, you know, working on this and restoring it and how much fun we had. If they had a little laugh at my expense learning how to make this bread, that's fine with me. I don't mind. We made some memories and they've got a piece of cast iron from their great grandmother that they can have and remember all of this family with. Friends, I do thank you for being here. If you restore some of your cast iron or if you try this bread, I would love for you to share it with me on Instagram. I love it when y'all send me pictures of the stuff that you're doing over there. I love to see it and I love to share it. Look at this beauty. Thank you so much for being here this week. And until next time, as always, I send you love from my kitchen. <laughs>